Welcome into the Miss Call Podcast. This is Cub Wooden, as always, here with Sauce Artori. And yes, this is the news episode. We are back. We're back. Yeah. So back. We're trying we're to get all back, the way back. To the, all the way back. Trying to get things back in the. We can, I guess I should say we're trying to get back into the swing of things as it pertains to our news podcasts and things like that. Certainly things are happening now in sports and it makes a bunch more sense for us to be doing uh, interviews as well as news podcasts. Today is going to be a big episode. We have huge news for you guys. We also have a full rundown of week three in the NFL and the Bulls have a new competent head coach. But, but before we get to that, uh, we got to take a second and pause and uh, let somebody know that we're thinking about them. So if you haven't seen our episode with Xavier Furkron, you definitely should go check that out. It was a couple weeks ago, but uh, Xavier came on the podcast and, and gave us a great episode, but uh, he's going through some tough times right now. Uh, recently, Xavier lost his sister in a car accident and it's awful news to hear. Uh, when you think about Z, he is a phenomenal human, great energy to be around. I've never met somebody who's had anything bad to say about Z. And he's, he's been given um, a, a difficult hand here recently. So we, we definitely want to let Z know that here at the missed call, we're thinking about him. I think I've, been, I've been thinking about him at least every day since I heard the news. Z, I went to high school with Z, and honest, honest to God, he's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And like I told you before, if you, you come on the podcast, you're family. I don't care if I barely know you or know you at all. You're family because you did us out, and we'll always be there for you no matter what. Right. So, Z, I, Z, I, I can't say this enough. If you ever need anything, we got your back, and I love you. Yeah, and that's the missed call promise. Uh, and I, come, I, I like that a lot. I like uh, – you know, you come on the pod, you're part of the family, and Z definitely is, is, is worthy of, of that membership of this family, right? So, Z, we're thinking about you, buddy. Stay strong. Uh, with that said, let's get into episode 117 of the Miss Call Podcast. Uh, 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 yeah. We already did. There he is. Oh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know if we were going to do the intro here. No, no. They don't need that. They don't need that. But uh, I suppose we can jump straight in with football because that's what we do anyway. Um, Bears are two and zero. It's an exciting time of year for sure. Uh, if you're watching the Bears right now, Cub, let's talk about it. Falcons are coming up. Let's do somewhat of a preview here. What do we think happens? As as me trying to figure out what I'm going to gamble on for the week, I, I'm I'm fading but I don't want to fade. I think the Bears will win because, like, what do I, what do we do? The, the Rams are frauds, the Cowboys are frauds, and the Falcons are frauds, in my opinion. They're teams that always are supposed to be good, and then they turn out to be trash. The Falcons are weird. Last week, they blew that 28 to 10 lead against the Cowboys. Yeah, but I heard last week called the battle of the frauds between those two teams because how many times have we seen the Cowboys supposed to be good and then they either get to the postseason or they get to a certain point in the season and they're garbage. And the same thing with the Falcons. I don't hate the Falcons. I just – I could do without them. And what's the line set at? It's set at – it's at three right now. So the Bears are plus three against the Falcons. I'm fading the game, but I bet you I live bet while I watch. I, I'm I'm really excited with the Bears this season. I like Mitch. I like where Mitch's head's at. Khalil Max definitely feeding his ego, telling him he's the best in the league, and that's yeah. why he's coming out firing against um, who the hell did they just play? The Giants. The Giants. My brain farted. And, but <clears throat> the Giants without Saquon was very impressive, though. Yeah, I think I think the defense definitely started to take their foot off the gas. Oh, they coasted a little bit because the only offensive weapon there was out of the game, and then other people started to step up. Uh, Daniel Jones actually didn't look too bad. I thought he had a uh, I thought he had a lot of uh, life in his arm. He was throwing some really good balls, but 
um, that uh, inevitably the defense stepped up. And, you know, I, I, I said this about last, last week's game. We cannot continue to have these games where they're heart stoppers at the end every single time. So moving into week three, I'm hoping that there is more consistent play, whether it's consistently bad or consistently good. I'm hoping to just see consistency. Don't take me on these roller coasters. Pick what you're going to be and be it. I think a good place to start with that would be Mitch Trubisky. Now, let me say this. When we, uh, when, when we looked at the Bears at the beginning of the season, this is going to be Trubisky's last year. I've kind of been approaching this as we should give Trubisky the opportunity he deserves here in the last – in the, what could be his last season as a Bear, right? He deserves this shot. And I think so far he's been playing phenomenal football for who he is, for who he is. He's going back to 18, Mitch, and I don't, I don't see 19, Mitch, anymore. I see 18, Mitch, right now, 2018, Mitch, and I'm here for it. Like, like right. said, no, I'm of course, uh, of course, any good production we can get out of – any good production we can get out of Trubisky is production we will take. But what I've noticed a lot, and I think what a lot of other Bears fans with any sense of football knowledge will notice, is that he's making multiple reads. He's going through progressions on, on his passes, which is something in 2019, last season, we didn't see at all. If you look at the two touchdown passes alone from this past Sunday's game against the Giants, True's already scanning the field, Right. He's, he's extending the play with his legs. He's looking – he's keeping – the biggest thing is he's been able to scramble. And he's been able to keep plays alive, but he doesn't keep his eyes up and figure out where the hell he's going to throw the ball. What I've been noticing is his eyes are up consistently. He's looking around. He's extending the plays, and it looks a lot better. I think the offense as a whole has played a lot better. The offensive line has been maybe one of the most unsung heroes of that team. And you've got, got – you've got – Montgomery going north. Tariq Cohen's finally figured out how to run the ball north and south. And Cordero Patterson, this experiment at running back, doesn't necessarily look like a bad idea either. You're missing one key thing about Mitch, though. His accuracy is there now. He's been making yeah, some well, great throws. And they, they, have, they, they might not have been completed, but they're on cue. Well, look at the two that uh, Anthony Miller dropped last week That's against what I'm saying. the Giants. Yeah, the, the one was a drop in the bucket in, in the end zone, a for sure touchdown. The other one was, I believe, a third down play that was to the sideline that was put in, in, an, in a perfect spot. So uh, if we're, we're obviously talking about a preview against the Falcons for the Bears in week three. I want to see consistency from this team is the point that I'm making. Trubisky needs to, needs to figure out, okay, how do I – he had, a, he had a solid second half in week one. He had a solid first half in week two. How do I do the whole thing? Hopefully we see that. The same thing from the defense. We need a, we need a start to finish good game. And I, 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 don't, I, I don't know that this is going to be the game that that happens, unfortunately, because they're going up. Any team that's led by Matt Ryan and Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley is going to be a high-powered offense regardless. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see what that secondary does. Now, Jalen Johnson has been playing phenomenal football. I truly think that he can match up with Calvin Ridley all game long and have some success. Kyle Fuller on the other side has definitely been tested in the past years going up against top wide receivers. He goes up against Thielen, uh, Devontae Adams, and Kenny Galladay uh, twice each year and has success. He's been an all-pro. He's, he's been in the Pro Bowl. And so this will be an interesting game to watch on the outside, of course. Like anybody with any football knowledge can say that. Um, but it, it, that's where the game, I think, is going to be won and lost. Because if you look at their defense – for the Falcons. It's not tremendous. It's not anything like that screams this, this defense is going to stop the pass or it's going to stop the run. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have that. Yeah. It used to, it doesn't have that anymore. So it, everything relies on that offense. And if the bears can get a solid push on, on the pass rush, which is something that I saw a big improvement in last week from week one to week two, there was a huge improvement in the pass rush. If they can continue to get that push, if they can continue to play tight defense, then I think that this is a game that the bears can win, but I, I I'm, I'm kind of on the edge about it, believe it or not. 
I am too. Because this is a game where it's all on the offense, I feel like. Because the, the Falcons have a great offense. So if the Bears D can hold them to, say, under 20 points. Right, which is, I mean, which is what they do anyway. Yeah, which is what they always do. But the Bears have sometimes a hard time scoring 20 points a game. Right. But that's why we get those Bears scores, Sauce. Those 17 to 13. Right. Yep. But what's grinding my gears, since it's right here, we'll stick with it. Sign Allen Robinson to an extension. For the love of God, you see, yeah. you extend Tyreek Cohen, who I could deal with. I could do without on the Bears roster. I don't like when Tyreek Cohen gets the ball. I can't Tariq. stand Tariq. I can't stand when Tariq Cohen gets the ball. I can't stand it. He is not the he is not equivalent. He is not the same talent level as Allen Robinson. He's not even close. No, get, but they're also not paying him on that same scale. I get what you're saying. It shouldn't have had priority over Allen Robinson. No. I mean, especially when, like, you're in the midst of, like, a debacle, right? Like, uh, uh, it was the, the same week, obviously, Ellen Robinson's deleting everything off of Twitter and off of Instagram, and they're like, you know, it'd be a great idea. Let's sign Tariq Cohen. A guy who can't even rush more than a half a yard per carry when it's up the middle. Well, and, but again, he's figuring it out. He's, he's learning how to run in the NFL. You know he what I mean? He hasn't been productive in two years. I also, I also don't think they have necessarily used him correctly in two years. If they're not going to utilize him, why would you extend him? That's my because, point. Be, be, I, that, it, it remains to be seen. I'm trying to play devil's advocate here with you, Cub, because I, can, I guess I could see why they did it. You know, that's, that's definitely elite speed and speed kills. And if Tariq figures it out in the next couple of years, he's signed on a contract for minimal value. And that's, that's obviously going to help the team. But the thing that I've noticed over the past couple of weeks is it seems to be a lot of running with Cohen, but there's not a lot of like the, the passes like there were now, again, I've been critical of Nagy in the past for being too cute with his play calling and doing too many of those screens and throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage too much. But uh, there are, there's a couple times where uh, Tariq Cohen's been open in the flat and it's almost, it almost feels like they've been telling true, like, Hey, keep your eyes up, throw the ball down the field. Don't worry about the flats. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't recall seeing any screenplays yet this season. If there was, I'm sure there's. I'm sure. I'm sure that there's been one or two. Yeah. But I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. A, as we're doing this, I'm going to look up Cohen's uh, stats because I don't think he has many receptions yet. Yeah, and he's a. Pa- he's a. He's there for passing plays. He's a passing back. So far oh. this year, Tariq Cohen has three receptions for 21 yards. How many, how many rushing attempts does he have? He's got, like, what, 35? He's got – no, no. He's got 12 rushing attempts for 53 yards. For some reason, my brain thought there were more games played this season. Just two it, of them. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I've been consuming so much football, I just feel like it's been around for quite a while. And that's kind of the cool thing that, I, that I'm starting to notice, like, being more into the gambling aspect of things. Like, I give a shit about – yeah. I give a shit about uh, um, a pick your game, right? Even if it's even if it's Jaguars Tennessee, like if there's a prop or something in the game, like I might tune into You're that game. You're a big prop guy. You, I love you, props. You drool over the props. I love. You're props. like, ooh, is Gardner Mitch you gonna throw over two and a half touchdowns? Bet. Yeah, I, I I enjoy a good prop bet because um, it's a little bit different than just saying like how many points, you know. Yeah. Obviously. You're also but, a big um, over under guy. Um I would say my least favorite thing to bet on is money line. I got a few this week. I, got a few. I, I like I like under over bets. I like to I like to talk about the spread too. But um so let's talk about let's talk about real quick for a second. What's your number one key for the Bears going in against the Falcons? What do they have to do to win? I think Mitch just has to keep doing what he's been doing the last two games, just being confident with himself, staying calm in the pocket, because the offensive line has his back. And then can his receivers make the, the 
to make the completions that he's giving them, then they're right there. Right. Well, the run so game's for- fine. The run game looks good. The pass game looks good. I'm obsessed with Daryl Moody. Darnell. Dar- Dar- I can't get names right today. I apologize, Darnell. Darnell Moody, come on the podcast. I love you. Is it? Now I have to double check. Is it Darnell I feel like Mooney? I was right. Is it Darnell or Dar? What did I say? That's Darnell Mooney. What did I say? Daryl. Da- uh, Daryl. Daryl. Darnell. You said Daryl. It's Darnell. Yes. My bad. Um, no. So for me, I, I definitely think that the Bears are are going to go into that game, and the defense is going to be fine. I feel like the defense is going to be okay. Believe it or not, I know I talked a lot about in this preview, if you want to even call it that, that. The, the biggest battle of the game is going to be on the outsides with the Falcons offense on the field. I truly feel like the defense is going to be okay though. I feel like they're going to get a decent push. I don't feel like Todd Gurley is going to be much of a factor on the ground. That's just me. I think the biggest thing is for Matt Nagy to remember that he has a really good running back in David Montgomery and to continue to use David Montgomery because we saw down the stretch against the giants, he kept handing it to Montgomery of giving it to Montgomery. He was eating up time on the clock. And also each, each play he's getting five, eight, 10, 11 yards. And that's how football works. That, that, and ladies and gentlemen, that's football. And that is how the game works. All right. So Cub, we're going to, we're going to do kind of a, a different approach to NFL week three. I'm going to go rapid fire through the lineup on uh, in week three. We're going to uh, uh, talk about them. If we have anything to say about them, if not, we can just say, fuck them. Right. Uh, but tonight's, tonight's matchup is a perfect Thursday night football matchup. Dolphins, Jaguars. Do we care? Yes. This is actually one of the best things I saw this week. I love how excited – Ryan Fitzpatrick and Gardner Minshew are for this game because they're already like talking trash. And uh, Fitzpatrick said the mustaches versus mustaches versus the beard. I think the beard, beards are cooler. Guys that grow mustaches have patchy sides. <laughs> and then yeah. Gardner said, I think I've shown that I can grow a beard with no patchy sides. I'm going to have to respect my elders, especially when they're much, much older. Be respectful. <laughs> I, I did see that. And I, and I like the, uh, I like that the quarterbacks are, are really getting into the battle for irrelevancy in Florida. Um, obviously, the Dolphins and the Jaguars, are neither one of those teams are going to be the best in, in Florida this year. That's hopefully going to be Tampa Bay. Uh, so the battle for irrelevancy begins tonight. It's also on, the battle of the NFL hillbillies. Network. <laughs> it's also the battle of the two hillbillies. Yeah, honest to God. Honest to God. Um, no, I, I think I think that'd be hilarious if they did uh, like promos for the game like that. They're like, which team matters least in Florida? Find out tonight on NFL Network. You know. <laughs> okay, so uh, do we have any any bets going into tonight's game? So far, I haven't looked at I haven't looked at the lines. I haven't really figured out what I'm doing yet in terms of gambling tonight. But it seems like you you know. I have I got the Jet or the Jags early this, this earlier in the week. I got them at minus two and a half. The line's at ooh. three right now. Yeah. The line's at three. It ooh, it almost went down. It just moved. It's at three right now. The over under is set at forty eight and a half. I would Okay, go, I, I have forty nine on mine. Oh, you get what'd you get? Or would you bet? Or you're not gonna bet it. I'm just saying I'm looking oh, at forty nine. Okay. We use what do you use? Uh fan, FanDuel, right? Yes, I use FanDuel, but right now I'm just on I'm, – I'm, I'm on Bleacher Report, and they have the, the spread and the over-under next to it. So that's what Bleacher Report has, I guess. What do they know? Hey, yeah, hey give uh, me a job. Give me a job, though. I'll take a job. But, yeah, I got the Jags. Okay, Jags just money line? No, Jags minus, minus two and a half. That, that's right. You said that. Duh. Okay, uh, moving into the Sunday slate. Sunday is uh, the, the, the birth of Sauce Day. Uh, so make sure you reach out and uh, oh, and it's your birthday. birthday! I was like, "What are you getting at?" The birth of sauce. Yeah, yeah that, right. that's that's yeah. It, it was it, yeah. Um, okay, so 49ers Giants, uh, the battle of the most injured. I think this is going to be a game where the 49ers pull it out. Regardless, the the 
Giants are probably going to look like dog shit because I'm I'm iffy with this one. I feel like the Giants could hold their own. They did it against the Bears without Joey Bosa or Nick Nick Bosa. I'm sorry, without Nick Bosa. I mean, that's kind of a big hit on their defense. But how? Let me ask. Let me ask. Is Garoppolo out for a while? Garoppolo's out this week too. Oh, well, then this might be a game where the Giants sneak one. That's why I was thinking I'm betting them plus four. That's are ballsy. Talk, are we going to talk ourselves into betting the Giants? That's ballsy. You're going to go plus four on the Giants? I might. Let's see what the – ooh, 60% of the public is betting the 49ers. 40% the Giants. That's almost even. Book it. Book it. Book it. I'm it. <laughs> writing it down right now. Plus four Giants. All right. Um, Bengals, Eagles, the spread is set at what I have anyway. The spread is set at four and a half, over under at 46 and a half. Um, again, I think this is another one of those games that's not going to matter very much. Something that's maybe on in the background. Uh, I. I, I <laughs> You know I mean? it's, nap. It, yeah, it's background noise. That's what this game is. Uh, but either either way, somebody's going to be getting their first win in this game. Who do we think it is, and why is it the Eagles? <laughs> it's not the Eagles. It's not. I got the Bengals plus six and a half. Okay. I like I like Burrow getting his first win against that secondary. The the Eagles have looked really really bad out of the gate, and so I I actually. Don't mind, uh, don't mind going with the Bengals there. Uh, then we got Raiders, Patriots. The Raiders have looked really good to start the season, but also so have the Patriots going toe to toe with the Seahawks last week on Sunday Night Football. Um, what do we think here? I've got, uh, I've got the Patriots are are five and a half point favorites. Fade, fade it. You fade it? Yeah, fade I think it. this might actually end up being one of the better games of the week just because the two teams have been so hot. Yeah. Um, Cam Newton seems to really be understanding the offense with Belichick uh, and, and um, McDaniel. And the Raiders look just all around good. Like the defense looks good. The offense looks good. Josh Jacobs is running the ball real well. And uh, I think it's a matter of time before Derek Carr starts finding Henry Ruggs and some of those, some of those new targets that they have. For Waller. Him. Waller's his favorite target. Waller got like eight or nine catches last week. And the cool thing about Darren Waller is he's literally a wide receiver playing tight end. He's, he's, bigger, than, got, he's bigger than Gronk and faster than Gronk. He's got – he's got. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. He's so fast, and it's really hard for anybody to keep up with that. I don't think, especially with all of the – all of the defensive players that the Patriots have sitting out this season, I don't know that they have the speed at uh, linebacker to keep up with Waller. I think it could be a big game for him. 100%. But you're still, so you're still sticking with the fade on this one? Fade. Fade. All right. Uh, up next, we got a battle of the unbeatens with uh, the Rams and Bills. They'll play on Fox. The Bills are two-and-a-half-point favorites in this one. I don't mind looking at the Rams to cover the spread here. I got the Rams plus two and a half. Do you? Okay. Yeah. See, and that, and, and that, that looks like a, that looks like there's a lot of value in that one for sure. The Rams, I think have played decent football to start the year. The bills have also played good football as well. Josh Allen has been slinging that ball around the field and it looks like him, him and the Stefan Diggs connection is going to be something that's successful moving forward. And the thing is the Rams, they're, un, they're undefeated and they've been underdogs every game they play this year. Bookie. Hey, anything Bookie. can happen. Anything can happen. Uh, another good one that I think uh, – I think the Texans – so the Texans oh, – another good, good one. I think, good I think the Texans have run into a lot of misfortune to start the year, and I think that they're going to continue to run into misfortune uh, at, at, with the Raiders – or the, rather the, the Steelers because I think the Steelers have maybe one of the best teams in football. Their defense looks really, really good. Their, their defense is going to eat the Texans alive. Yeah. Steelers minus four. This, the, the Texans have the 19th ranked deep, our offensive line. 
that defense, those linebackers and defensive linemen for the Steelers are going to bulldoze them and destroy Deshaun. We'll, we'll, we'll say it right now. We will say a quick prayer for Deshaun Watson's life because that man is going to have to carry that entire team. Yeah, well, and that's, that's kind of been the thing that I've noticed out of the Texans is, like, they got rid of his number one target. They bring in David Johnson, who, like, okay, I guess you can bring in David Johnson. But, like, they got rid of his number one target. They dropped all that money. And then they didn't do anything on the offensive line. Which Laramie was bad Puzzles last year. Over there with a mask on. Which was bad last year, and it continues to be bad this year. Right. No, I, 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 I got – no, I, I know what you're saying. I understand what you're doing. Um, I think this is a game where the Steelers end up going 3-0. and The Texans, unfortunately, will drop to 0-3. Um, I, think, I think the defense is going to be the major factor here for the Steelers. Um, again, if we have nothing to say about a certain game, we can definitely skip it. Uh, the Titans and the Vikings. Yeah, I, I would say that's a, that's a good one to skip. The Vikings have looked, uh, the Vikings have looked absolutely atrocious, and uh, Kirk Cousins looks like Kirk Cousins again. Let's get the another Washington, one out of the way. Let's get another one out of the way. Washington, the Washington Cleveland. football team Goodbye. and the Cleveland Browns. Goodbye. See you later. Uh, the, the New York football Jets and the Indianapolis Colts faded. Hey. This is one where I think the Colts are going to win, though. I think that'll be, that'll be a good, a good tune-up game for the Colts. Panthers, Chargers. I've been on the fence with this one, Sauce. Um, I'm thinking Carolina six and a half. I don't know why. Actually, they said Justin Herb. Actually, I refrain from what I said. I take back what I said. I'm going Chargers six and a half if Herbert's playing, and they said he's playing. He should be playing. I mean, like, like we figured out over the week, Terod Taylor got his lung punctured by the team doctor, which what the that, fuck? What? What the fuck? Was First of all. Hurt? Right. That, that's what led to Justin Herbert's first start. So years from that now. That game was awesome. It was. It Even was. though I had money on Kansas City covering, I didn't care. Justin Herbert, Justin Herbert was out there slinging that thing as if he's been in the league for five years. Have Even a day, kid. Have, have a freaking day, kid. Have, have a debut. Um, I, I, think I, I think I also like Chargers at six and a half there, too. Uh, Bucks, Broncos. Bucks? Ooh, wait, did I... This could be a fun game. I feel like I this could TV be a fun game. Minus six. I think this one, yeah, this one is in Denver. So this one has the, the opportunity to be a, a fun one. The biggest thing here is the Broncos don't have a quarterback, really, going into this. Jeff Driscoll is probably going to start for them. So I think this is a game for the Buccaneers to take at minus six. But their defense has looked good uh, to start the season. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that one plays out. Cowboys, Seahawks. This one could be fun if the Cowboys show up, but I have the Seahawks at minus four and a half here. I'm with you. Minus five. I'm with you. Uh, uh, Lions, Cardinals. Cardinals cover easily. Easily. I think so too. At minus, what do you have? I have minus five and a half. I have them at. Oh, I didn't even place the bet yet. Minus five and a half. Yeah, I, I, I like the cover there 100%. And then we got Sunday Night Football, Saints-Packers. This one's always a good matchup. Uh, you got Rodgers, you got Breeze. It's going to be a good one regardless. Uh, the Saints are favorites at minus three. I got Green Bay money line. Green Bay money line. I actually, I actually think that might happen. It, but, but I don't usually bet money line. Yeah, I say it. So, I, so I might have to sit out on this. You know I, I mean? might have to say I don't really like the spread. So then we have to get we have to get to the very end here because this is going this is going to be maybe the biggest game of the year, maybe the definitely the biggest game of the week. Monday night football, September twenty eighth. Chiefs, Ravens, the two longest active winning streaks in the NFL. I believe the Chiefs sit at fourteen consecutive games i believe the ravens are at eight consecutive games dating back to last year of course this is going to be a dog fight sauce please talk me into betting one of the spreads just just talk me into spread, putting a bet on one of the spreads because right now i have the over at 53 and a half if that doesn't hit we will not get our money's worth for that game i have a feeling 
You have a that feeling. this could be this could be one of Pat Mahomes' worst games as a professional. But the thing the thing about Pat is some of his worst performances have been one of his best games. Yeah, where he bounces back in the la- in the last quarter. Here's a, here's the thing, man. Here's here's the thing. You look at last week. Mahomes definitely struggled against the Chargers defense. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And so the Chargers defense is not even in the same sentence as no. the Ravens defense. Not even so close. you got to believe you got to believe the Ravens are looking at everything the Chargers did last week and they're going to do it on steroids. Does that make sense? Now, of course, Pat Mahomes is a professional. He's going to be looking at the tape from last week, too, and figuring out what was wrong, how we can improve, and things like that. But this, this Ravens defense is the real deal. And so I have, I have a feeling that this could be one of Mahomes' worst games as a professional yet, and it's going to send, it's going to send sports media into an absolute tizzy on the other side of it. Tuesday morning, they'll be talking about, oh, Pat Mahomes, has he found his kryptonite? And, and it may be, but I think, I think this is going to be a fun one to watch regardless. I just want to say thank you for talking into me for betting the Ravens minus three and a half. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're I think, welcome. Oh, then what's Monday? Monday? Oh, that is Monday night. That's it. Yeah, that that's the Monday night game, and that's just, and that that is the the rundown for week three. Uh, before we get into baseball talk, I think it is appropriate right now to break the possibly the biggest news in missed call history. Um, we were approached uh, <laughs> about a month ago. I was maybe, approached. Regardless, uh, the, the podcast was approached. I, I don't know why we opine over who was approached, but the podcast was <laughs> approached um, maybe about five weeks ago to, to join a, a media company known as Bustom Media. And we've, we've been going through talks, negotiations, and we've struck a deal uh, here on out. Uh, this will be the Missed Call podcast presented by Bustom Media. Even though we haven't signed, we're 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 getting ready to sign. Yeah. I, I again, I don't know why we're discussing business openly on the air when it can definitely just be. <laughs> anyway, yes, we're going to be signing with Busta Media. Uh, uh, this is this is a big step forward for the Miss Call Podcast now. Maybe you're a big fan, which is a huge compliment to us. If you're a big fan, you might be wondering, oh, no, what's going to change? Guess what? Not much. Nothing. You Not still much. got the thick athletes, the Tinder bios, the thick athletes. Yeah. What else do people uh, like about us? Every, well, that, that might be about it. Um, everything that has been will continue to be. The only difference that uh, – that, we know of is going to be uh, this podcast will be presented by Busta Media and we'll let you know that frequently. We'll let you know that often. And there will, they will, there will occasionally be uh, read throughs for other podcasts on the media platform as well. And uh, we're really excited about this. This is a, a huge step forward for our brand. It's a huge step forward for Busta Media as well. And uh, it's, it's something that we are very, very, very much looking forward to. Yeah, uh, Sauce hit me up or hit me with uh, yesterday the look at us. Who would have thought? And I said, hey, let's make that question mark a little bit bigger. And let's keep pushing this thing. Yeah, well, but I mean, honest to God, Cub. I mean, we've, we've talked about the origins of this podcast plenty of times. People know how we met. People know how this whole thing got started. And it's not like we're, it's not like we're some crazy big podcast, but it's, it's, it's cool to think, you know, we were two dudes sitting on the bridge of Joliet junior college eating wraps. and eating, eating Buffalo chicken wraps. And now we're 117 episodes later. We're two years deep into this thing. We're, I mean, we're, we're, we're signing with a media company. Like, Honest to God, it was it, it was a moment of who would have thought? Who would have thought it would have lasted this long? Who would have thought we would have had the longevity out of this? And that anybody would approach us to have our 
our show on their media platform. My, my random thought for the week was going to be me asking you, what, what, how far, what, were you, what were your thoughts when we started this? Like, where did you think it would go? Uh, so, I mean, we can really break this down and have a really intimate moment, but I, I, it was a hobby. It was a hobby, right? And to some extent, ex- to some extent um, it, it was still a hobby until uh, a couple weeks ago when we really started thinking about like, okay, this is going to be something that we're going to sign a contract for and people want us to, to work for them and things like that. And now it's becoming much more than just a hobby, right? It's, it's becoming a, a real thing, a real integral part of our lives. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's just crazy to think about where we're at. I, 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 there, I, I don't think that I'm the only one in this, in this group who's thought about, man, maybe we should just, maybe we should just stop. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've had those moments where it's like, fuck, like we hit a brick wall. I've texted you about it. I'm like, man, like I really wish we could, we could do this and that, but we can't because we're, we're here. And you know, it's, 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 it's cool to be making these strides. I'm the one that's got to pick us up and stay positive. Cause you know, I'm the smiley guy. You'll be like, you'll be like, dude, like, what are we doing wrong? And then I got to bring, I got to put, bring you to reality and show you where we're at, where we've come from and let you realize that we have put in so much goddamn work to stop now. Like, I didn't put in two and a half years of work to this to just end. Like, yeah, yes. it'd, be like breaking up, it'd be like breaking up with your high school sweetheart at this point. Don't, don't, happy eighth anniversary, by the way. Oh, God, I love you. But no, like, I'm serious. Like, I know how I, like, left in the beginning. When I was like, what, two months in? I was like, hey, I can't do this. And I came back. That's very different from us just going from what we'll say like 80 interviews and then just us going, yeah, we don't need these connections anymore. Yeah. No, it'd be idiotic. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I, and I'm happy that we've, that we've stuck it out and we're at this point. And again, this moving forward will be the missed call podcast presented by Busta media. Um, make sure that you go follow our friends over at Busta media on Instagram. They are at Busta media. I believe the, 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 the Twitter handle is, is the exact same at bust E M Bustum media. Uh, so I just want to say one last thing. Uh, a, a wise man once said the ceiling is the roof. Let's go tear that roof off. Let's go tear the roof off. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about uh, playoff baseball. This is a, a transition in, into playoff baseball. Your Yankees are in the playoffs somehow, some way. My Cubs are in the playoffs, um, and so are a bunch of other teams. Um, if the playoffs started today, who is who is your World Series champion? <laughs> That's this this year is so weird that like I have teams where I'm like okay they're gonna they're gonna do something in the playoffs and then they just get cold like it's a it's it's hard because teams are hot and cold hot and cold hot and cold like the Yankees just won ten games in a row and now I think they've lost two oh they they lost one I thought they lost like two straight but no they beat the Blue Jays two days ago and they lost yesterday fourteen to one or something like that but like. The White Sox are hot. I'm big on the White, white paying attention to the White Sox. I love what they're doing. I love they're electrifying. <clears throat> Luis Roberts oh, yeah. is unreal. Uh, the Marlins, we, like, take let's take a step back, Sauce. If the Marlins made it to the World Series, we would lose our minds and we'd be diehards. There, there the is definitely, there is definitely one better out there who put a hundred bucks on the Marlins at like thir- pl- <laughs> like plus 3,200 and he's going to be making bank. Dude, it's insane. And like, if as a fan of sports, you couldn't even be mad if they made the world series. It'd be cool. No, I, I think there'd be some, some old heads of baseball that would be like, are you kidding me? There's no way. But like, Everybody loves seeing a new team. 
like within like the championship. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's my favorite thing about sports. I hate seeing like basketball, Cavs, Warriors, Warriors, whoever, Warriors, whoever. I hate right. it. I hate well, it. Unless it's my favorite team, I hate it. In the American League, there aren't many "quote unquote" new teams, right? Uh, making the playoffs this year. Everybody from last year, it seems, is going to be there. Uh, and then the Blue Jays are an addition, uh, and the White Sox too, of course. The White Sox being in there has kind of seemed like an inevitability since the start of the season. Uh, but the White Sox will be there too. Uh, if if the playoffs started today, the Rays would be the one seed, the A's are the two seed, the Twins, and then the White Sox. Uh, the Yankees are at five, Astros six, Indian seven, Blue Jays are the eighth seed. Um, for me, my World Series winner is coming out of the American League. And it is, without question, the Tampa Bay Rays. I was going to say the Rays. That, the that's that's my so team good. going forward. The, the, the rotation's so, the rotation's untouchable. And when you get into the playoffs, what matters the most? Yeah. Unless they turn into Clayton Kershaw. Correct. Uh, on, the, on the other side, the Dodgers won, Braves three, Cubs three, uh, Braves two, Cubs three. Padres are actually the fourth seed. And then Cardinals, Marlins, Giants, Reds to round out the eight from, from the, the National League. Again, you talk about new teams. This is going to be kind of fun. Uh, now, there's still an entire weekend left of baseball, right? As we're speaking, it is 3.30 in the afternoon on Thursday, and there is still games to be played tonight and all weekend. So there are about four games left for each team. And so things can shake up in the last couple of days. Uh, the Cubs can jump up to two still, or they can probably fall all the way down to five. I don't know how it's all going to shake out. But uh, for right now, this seems to be a pretty solid of what's going to happen. The bottom half of the NL – Wild card race is going to get a little crazy because there are two or three teams that are on the outside looking in from just a game back. So uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. I'm excited to see how this new three game wild card series is going to work to open up the playoffs. Yeah, this this is the this is a forever thing, right? They're like they'll be doing this in the future, right? I when it comes when it comes when it comes to um, the future, I'm unsure of what sticks and what doesn't. Okay, because I, yeah, because I, Kirchin was talking about it the other day, and I agree with him 100%. Like, I'm all for the weird playoff thing this year, but like next year when it's like 162 games, I don't, I don't like seeing teams that have an under 500 record in any sport in the right. playoffs. Right. And I think, I think the sentiment starts to be like, Okay, 60 games, we really don't know who should have and who should yeah. not have made the playoffs. But in 162 games, you definitely know who should have made it and who should not have made it. And obviously there's going to be those years where teams miss it by a game or a half game or whatever, but that's baseball, right? And so I think this year it, it was important to have this playoff format because, again, like you look at the Reds, there's no doubt in my mind the Reds are a playoff team, but they only had 60 games to figure it out, and there's a lot of new faces on that roster. And they, had it, they did not play good baseball to start the year year but now they're starting to click you know the the marlins there's no doubt in my mind that that team is not a playoff team but they they've shut played good enough you shut your mouth that's they are you shut your damn mouth but they've played good enough baseball to be there right but over 162 games there's no there's no doubt in my mind the they're Pods, not going the to Padres, make it. that's a playoff team i think so i think electric. so electric but you also have to remember too like each one of these teams is only playing within its division yeah, or within its, within its, you know, you get what I'm saying. Like the central playing the central, the East playing the East and in both leagues. Um, and in, in the NL central, there is like the, like, I think it's six of the worst or the least productive offenses in the league are in the central. Boy. Now I don't know if, I don't know if that's a concept of, of great pitching or if it's concept of bad offense, but regardless, you know, it, 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 it's just interesting to see. And like, when we get to the playoffs, there's going to be teams like, you know, uh, 
it's going to seem like the World Series almost because some of these teams haven't met all year. Like if the Dodgers played the Reds in the first round, like the Dodgers haven't played the Reds all year. So it's almost like an American League versus National League matchup because they haven't seen each other at all. And then going off the, the 500 thing again, Kirchin talked about how baseball is a sport where anyone can win. Well, that's sports in general too. But like say the Marlins do make the World Series. They shouldn't be there. You know, I don't, I, I, I don't think the Marlins are going to make it past the first you, round. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, like uh, under, or like you say under 500 team in general, it just makes the world series. They shouldn't be there. Right. No, a hundred, a hundred percent. You have my full support in, in that. And then that's not, then that's not even me being like a baseball. What's the word I'm looking for? Baseball. Hardo. Yeah. That's, that's just sports. Like why should a losing team make the championship? Or even the playoffs. This is the only yeah. time that makes sense, and it only will ever make sense with 60 games. I'm also, with this three-game series to start, I'm also really interested to see how – so usually the, the number one seed has a little bit more time to figure out what they're doing, right? Like the wild card happens, and then they figure out – who, who they get, right? And that, that number one seed has the upper hand in saying, okay, you get our ace and we're going to get your number four or we're going to get your number five or whatever it might be, right? That number one seed usually has that upper hand where now they're going ace, ace, two, two, three, three, and we're going to figure it the hell out and see how it all shakes out. Like the Reds, like, again, I'll, fo- I'll fix it on this Dodgers-Reds if that is the first round matchup, right? That's a that's a series where if Bauer goes game one and shoves against Garrett Cole, or, or rather if Bauer goes game one and shoves against um, I don't know why the hell I said Garrett Cole, but if he goes up <laughs> and he shoves against um, like, like Walker Bueller or or whoever takes the ball in game one, if it's Kershaw, if it's Bueller, if it's David Price, I doubt it will be David Price, but you get what I'm saying. Like that's a game that they could lose. And then Sonny Gray goes the next day, and Sonny Gray's been oh. pitching phenomenally this year. And that's another game where they could lose. And if you lose both of those. Who's their third day? The Reds? Yeah. Um, they've been kind of uh, going a bunch of different ways. It could be um, Tyler Malley. It could be um, Deska Lafani. I'm, I'm sure I'm missing somebody on their rotation. Oh, no, it's not one of those guys. It's Luis Castillo. Oh, it's Luis Castillo. Oh, so again, like it's going to be interesting to see how this all shakes out. What are the odds? One of, one of the odds one of our teams makes it slim, very slim, especially with the way the, the Cubs are playing. They actually just wrapped up as we're talking, they just wrapped up a game against the Pirates where they lost seven to nothing. <laughs> the Pirates. Like the worst team in the league. What's that dude's worse name? than uh, the Orioles? What's that dude? Who plays shortstop for them? The Pirates. Um, Cole. It depends. What, what's his name? Oh, Cole. Cole, are you talking about Cole Tucker? Cole Tucker. Cole Tucker out there hitting yabos. He's a he's a utility guy. I love um, Cole Tucker. Yeah. I do. That's I like nice, man. I like his hair. But going back to our team, who goes the who goes further? Well, right now, again, we'll talk about the, the first, the first round matchups as of today. It'd be White Sox, Yankees, Cubs, Marlins. Mm-hmm. To me, Sox win. Seems like the, seems like the Cubs are going to go farther. <laughs> but anything's, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Um, so, uh, having talked about all of this, do you have a, a, a now? idea of who your champion might be i said rays i'll stick with rays do the dodgers finally get one might the a's and their money ball approach work i'm gonna go dodgers dodgers okay uh we'll we'll go with number one seeds here and, and we'll figure it out from there so um we have one more big topic that we must get to before we get into Tinder bios and wrap up the show. And that is that the bulls, the Chicago bulls have a competent head coach. We'll, we'll, they, we'll, we'll give them a moment. A yeah, four year contract worth 21, 
24 million dollars to Billy Donovan to be the new head coach of the Chicago Bulls Cub first thoughts congrats on having a competent head coach Chicago right he went from dud to stud Ooh, look at that oh oh man I I liked this a lot because they went out and they got the best head coach on the market. They're not looking, they're not looking through the broom closet in Philadelphia. They're not looking through the equipment room in what in uh, golden state. They, they went out and they got the best guy who's been a head coach who knows what the hell he's doing. And they're not taking a chance on some, some dude out of the coat closet in, in Houston. You know what I mean? He, He's been able to put together some good teams to make a good playoff run. Like this year with the – nobody had – I think the percentage on the Thunder making the playoffs was like 2% with just Chris Paul. He, he gets a lot out of his guys. Yeah. And that, and that was proof, uh, obviously, during his run in, at Florida. He gets a lot out of his guys. And, and coming to, to the league, you know, I think, I think it's proven – that that he's a he is a good head coach. I would dare to say I would say he is in the top tier of head coaches in the NBA. Hundred percent. And I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be fun to watch how he'll mold this this crew of guys. Obviously, we we've, we've talked about before. Kobe White is is a special talent. He's a guy that I could see really benefiting from this. Zach Levine, who's the undoubted leader of this team, you know, I think that he's going to benefit wildly from this too. And just the guys, like, you obviously you have Lowry there, who's the stretch four. And we always forget about uh, Wendell, Wendell Carter as well. And that's a guy who can really benefit from this too. Look at the work he did with Steven Adams. Steven Adams had uh, a nice run while Billy Donovan was the head coach in, in uh, OKC. After the draft... I don't know who where where are the where are the Bulls at for the draft? Four. Four? I don't know who they're gonna pick, but um are the Bulls a playoff team? Certainly anything's possible. Especially right? in, the, in the East. Yeah, and that narrative is that narrative is kind of shaking itself out a little bit and it's not as wide open as it was. Um the eight seed. You know, that eight, that eight and seven, maybe even that six seed, those are all attainable spots, I think, for the Bulls next year if they execute well in free agency and if they execute well in, um, in the draft as well. Now, that, uh, the Bulls are a team that draft well anyway, so I assume that they will be just fine. Uh, but with a top selection like the fourth pick, unless, unless somebody moves up, of course, somebody gives them a king's ransom for the fourth pick uh, – it, there's there's a lot of pressure that comes with that selection. Are we booking it that the Bulls are making the playoffs? Are we going to put that bet in? I still- could do that. I could definitely do that. Oh, future bet sauce! Ooh, I love a good future bet. Let future me tell bet. you. Let me tell you. In 2017, I had two future bets, right? And I oh. think I was pretty. I was pretty close to being spot on with these future bets. I put a hundred dollars in 2017. I put a hundred dollars down on the Dodgers to win the World Series at 7-1. to one. Dodgers okay. got to the World Series. What happened in that World Series, Cub? The Astros in their trash can. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So how upset was this guy when he figured out that the Astros were cheating him out of money? What was your other bet? The other bet was the Steelers at 12-1 to one odds. And that year, you might remember, was the year that the NFL finally figured out what a catch was. Uh, So towards the end of the year, there was a game between Pittsburgh and New England. And I believe Jesse James was the tight end who got... Oh, that was a catch! ...who got screwed out of a touchdown. The Steelers go on to lose that game. They get less preferential uh, seating in the playoffs and they get bounced in round one. That was a round two. I something, was, something like that happened it, in, in the playoffs. The, the seeding fucked them over and then they lost earlier in the playoffs and they should have. I'm mad that I'm remembering that now because I recall myself on the couch losing my goddamn mind. Do you know how much I hate Tom Brady? When I talk football with my dad, he goes, how's your favorite quarterback doing? And I go, well, Mitch isn't doing, he goes, no, your favorite quarterback. Because I thought he was just being sarcastic about Bears football. He goes, right. "No, you, your favorite quarterback that plays in Florida now." I go, 
he's doing okay, Phil. As as a quick aside before we before we wrap up completely, I want to just say I've been watching basketball. <gasps> Look at me. I've been watching Gosh. I've been watching basketball from the bubble and if there was a question of whether or not Jamal Murray was an elite player before after game was it game 4 or game 3 he miss. him and Jokic don't miss or Jokic after miss. after game 3 there is there can be no doubt in anyone's mind that that kid is absolute nails hey uh Jamal, congrats on that head, my man. <laughs> and, hey, go on your tweet. It wasn't on Instagram Live. He just put it on his story. Regardless of, of what happened, I, I remember vividly the night that Jamal Murray got his dick sucked on Instagram. Who, who do you who you got in the finals? He, I think I think I think uh, I think the Celtics are on ice. I think I think they're just living on borrowed time right now. So it's going to be Heat. And I think whatever happens in game four is going to be what decides that, that series in, uh, well, I guess it's in Orlando, but the series between LA and Denver, I think what happens in game four is what's going to be the deciding factor. There's if, a Denver wins, if Denver wins in game four, Denver wins the series. If LA wins in game four, LA wins the series. Are you, are you, Sasha, are you sure about that? Because there's a meme going around with SpongeBob with the two eyes on the book. And it said, do the Lakers want to go 2-2 or do they want to go 3-1? Because the Nuggets have come back 3-1 in all series they've played in this thus far in the playoffs. I feel like the Cinderella story would come to an end if they got to 3-1 for a third time in these playoffs. Yeah, I, I'm looking that way. Basketball, basketball fans will be pissed if it's Nuggets heat. That just sounds disgusting. But we like – I thought we liked new teams. I don't want the Nuggets to make it. I, I'm a Why? Le- it's a new I'm team. I'm a LeBron guy. I'm, Everybody, I'm, I mean, well, I'm okay. bronze sexual sauce. All right. Uh, this might be a good time to wrap up the show uh, after Cub has declared his bronze sexuality to the entire world. Um, listen, this has been a huge episode. Uh, again, we're, we're beyond elated to be in a position to, uh, to be signed on to a media company and moving forward with Busta Media. This is going to be a lot of fun. Seems like you have something to say, Cub. I just want to say to the people that really enjoy our segments and they come on for the segments, just know we're, gonna, we're, we're figuring out how to, how to mold the news pod. We're figuring out how to mold it so it's still a lifestyle-esque sports podcast. So give us time. We, we're both not that bright, mostly me. Sauce is a very intelligent vocabulary book that he is, throwing out words that no one knows what we're talking about, mostly me, because I Google them after the podcast. Just know, we'll figure it out, and we'll give you a chef's kiss podcast. Now, Sauce, give me a bio. Give me a damn bio. All right. All right. Let's look. Uh, Give me some just goodies. Thumbing, I'm just thumbing through it real quick. All right, we'll go with uh, with Jamie, who is, is 21 and uh, is allegedly transmasculine, which I'm unfamiliar with that terminology. Uh, but here's what Jamie has to say. Yo, call me Jamie. <laughs> Fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> call me Jamie or Stinky Dumpus. I'm short as fuck. Film and acting student at this college. I'm bi and non-binary. They, he, most recent picks are with the mullet. Dancing emoji. Mainly looking for friends, uh, friends, friends with benefits and hookups to go thrift shopping with me. Also, I love weed and video games. I cosplay and go to cons too. I'm a huge dork and have probably seen your favorite anime hit me up. Also, looking for a plug during these trying times. Sauce, what's your, what's your favorite comic? My favorite comic? I don't have one, but I guess, I guess Pokemon is considered anime. Right, does she know what your favorite anime is? I'm going to assume yes. 
what are you doing with her? With Stinky Dumpus. <laughs> uh, me and Stinky Dumpus can definitely go on. Uh, you remember Pokemon Go? Oh, a Pokemon Go date where you just drive around? Me, me and Stinky Dumpus. <laughs> Me and Stinky Dumpus can take a walk uh, to a local thrift shop uh, 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 to uh, while we're playing Pokemon Go. That's about as far as I'll go with Stinky Dumpus, Jamie. That was such a good one. Stinky good old Dumpus. Stinky Dumpus. All right, this is Roxana. She's 21. She's a model at Vixen Incorporated. Looking, l- looking for a man to come inside me so I can wipe my goopy vagina along the kitchen. <laughs> and pretend I am a slug. If you are interested, just message me on my Snapchat at her snap. <laughs> he took off his headphones. <laughs> to wipe my goopy vagina on the kitchen floor. It's the word goopy for me. <laughs> it's that She's going to be. It's that she wants to be a slug for me. Are you going to turn her into a slug? <laughs> or what, Cub? <laughs> I always wear protection. She's not getting that. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be yelling, Fade, snail, fade trail, fade snail trail, snail trail. Fade, her, fade Roxanne. Fade Roxanne. <laughs> All right, I got Jazz, who is 20, new to the city and bored as hell, looking for a super, super hood shorty loves trappers. That'll... <laughs> Looking for a super, super hood, Shorty Loves Trappers. That'll possibly possible get knocked out if you try to do me, but I'm super sweet. Looking for one trapper. That was all one sentence. If you broke or not got money, I can't say that word. If you broke or not a money-getting person, I'm sorry, my pussy is some sandpaper to you. Also, no fat boys. Leo. Oh. N, I'm not a hoe. Just because we match does not mean we fucking yo. It rhymed. Girlies, 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 hit me up. I'm just trying to be friends. None of that gay shit. Fuck. <laughs> Unless I'm drunk, then I might let you eat up. <laughs> Then I might let you eat my pussy is how she ends that. Um, that was a good one. Well, she said no fat boys. So in the, in this scenario, I'm, I'm fading jazz. I got to fade her. She didn't say, she said, she didn't say no to thick. You mean fat, get fat. Uh, I'm pretty fat. There goes the compliment over his head. <laughs> <laughs> this is Natalie. She's 37. It says, just read my bio. Not only swipe photo. That's 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 where it says she works. I'm a I'm sick. I'm single mom looking for fuck. These buddy. are the these. Hold on. These are the fucking best. Single moms on Tinder are the absolute best. Hold on. I'm single mom looking for fuck buddy. She spelled fuck f u v c k. She's got her kid on her hip and she's typing with one hand. Please leave her alone. Who wants to? Who wants to try the most earth shacking sex that I never had before? Hmm. Is it shacking or shaking, Cub? Shack is CK. Earth shack shaking sex <laughs> that I never had before. Hmm. I don't think people really read these, but if you're one of a thousand guys who do. I attach my WhatsApp number on my album. Try to find it. And if you see it, send me a message and say, smile. And then we'll make it different. And then we'll make it different. Hey, listen, man. Like I said, single moms on Tinder are the best because nine times out of 10, they make absolutely no sense. They, they, they type out their bio like you type out professional emails exactly like they talk. And it's, it's always wonderful to try to decipher what the hell they actually mean. What is this woman's name? N- Natalia. 
Natalia, I'll send you 50 bucks so you can feed your kid. Uh, other than that. This is mine. What are you talking for? This is not uh, yours. I'm just trying to get Natalia the hell out of here. <laughs> I find Natalia rather enthralling. Oh, look at you with a word. Hey, I know words. I find her rather enthralling. I like moms. She doesn't want to commit to anything. Seems she, right up your alley. I'm mm, commitment do I, issues. Do I have commitment issues? No. But I, can I say I do? Yeah. Never commit unless your heart's in it. Um, I will take Natalia out on a McDonald's date with my car, and then we might we might go to the back seat. It'll be like it'll be like 2015 Cup all over again in high school. Nice man. But uh, Earth sh sh shaking. Sex. We can shake the car. All right, let's. <laughs> Good. I'm I'm happy for hey, you. Hey, what's what's the first chick's name again? Uh, Stinky, Stinky Dumpus. <laughs> Stinky Dumpus. Uh, yeah, you Jamie. Call yourself that? Can you imagine typing that out and being like, "Oh yeah, I'm telling you to get away." Just like that, too. Listen, we got to wrap this up. We've gone a little long. Um, this has been fun. It's been fun to get back into the news format, just kind of let some things fly from the hip. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, and we will be back uh, on Instagram Live with the uh, Call Your Shot segment of the podcast on Instagram Live. So if you have not yet, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Call Podcast. Tomorrow we'll be on live uh, talking about our picks for the weekend and, and so much more. Uh, so for that, we will wrap up episode 117 of the Miss Call Podcast. I'm Saw Sartori. You know this is Cub Wood. And we oh. love you guys as always. Love you guys.